Hey guys, welcome to Functional Dyspepsia here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal, and this is a YouTube channel that I've set up uh, just to kind of house information as I gather it regarding functional dyspepsia, um, which is a function functional gastrointestinal disorder or an FGID. I've personally had it for um, about four years since I had gallbladder surgery. Did not expect to uh, get this as an outcome of that, but such is life. Um, I've been dealing with the postprandial gallbladder form of FD, which is basically a lot of bloating after meals. And uh, more recently, when I saw my uh, gastroenterologist, or the last time I did, he diagnosed me with abdominophrenic dyssynergia, or APD for short. Uh, this isn't really all that helpful because um, treatment seems to be very confusing or complicated as to how you get treatment. There is experimentary forms of biofeedback, but you have to obviously have someone to do that for you. Uh, perhaps physical therapy. It seems like a bit of a, a gray area at the moment. At least I'm encountering that trying to get help. But uh, this article came out from John Damiano, who I actually interviewed before in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. And he had a couple of really nice diagrams uh, that I thought I would reproduce here because if you if, if you've also got this diagnosis and you're like what and or the what in the earth is that abdominophrenic dyssynergia at least this explains what goes on so I'm gonna just make this a little bit bigger so it's uh there we go so firstly looking at normal abdominal accommodation so basically what this means abdominophrenic if you if we break down the word phrenic is used to refer to stuff to do with the dia the diaphragm. Uh, which is that, you know, the classic dome-shaped muscle that helps us to breathe. Uh, so abdominophrenic. And then dyssynergia is, I think the definition is a miscoordination of energy uh, in the body, like sending energy to the wrong muscles that are supposed to work in synchrony. So basically a sort of lack of synchrony between these two uh, organs. So a normal accommodation, normal abdominal accommodation, right? Um, in normal conditions, the abdominal walls adapt to its content. A volume increase elicits a coordinated abdominophrenic response to prevent distension. So when we eat or drink, right, the contents of the food and the water will move into the organ called the stomach through our esophagus. And then there's this kind of automatic response that prevents us from um, descent now bloating is the feeling of feeling like you're too full and distension is the actual visible increase they're not they're not quite the same thing you can have one without the other but for the purpose of simplicity let's call it bloating and distension so you eat or drink comes into your stomach and normally you don't feel bloating right for the most part if you've got a healthy digestive system and the reason for that magic right if you look at the stomach as kind of just like a pouch you would imagine that if you put a lot of stuff into it, it would start filling up and pushing against the stomach. And the reason that that doesn't happen most of the time uh, is because of this normal abdominal accommodation response. And uh, that basically involves the abdominal walls, which are depicted in yellow here, this musculature. This is going to be contracting. And we'll actually read, it's got a description here. Coordinated relaxation of the diagram and contraction of the anterior wall to expand the abdominal cavity without anterior protrusion. So in the uh, correct scheme of things, we're going to have the abdominal wall contracting and the diaphragm relaxing. When the diaphragm relaxing is, think about it as a dome, the dome in red here, it's going to just kind of move up. And that's going to actually give us give the stomach more space, right? Because the diaphragm is going to be up, so a bit more space. And the uh, abdominal walls are going to contract. So that's going to allow the uh, food and water contents to expand the stomach a bit without looking like you're pregnant. Let's jump over now to abdominal phrenic dysinertia state, where stuff goes wrong. So both the diaphragm and the abdominal walls don't do what do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. So the abdominal wall musculature in yellow is moving out but i actually from what i understand it's actually kind of the problem starts with the diaphragm because the diaphragm inappropriate um and then you've got the food coming into the stomach and this just kind of like by gravity and by pressure forces the abdominal wall to push out i'm going to just jump over to the description of abdominal dysinertia which is b in patients 
with abdominal phrenic dysinertia. Abdominal distension is produced by a paradoxical contraction of the diaphragm and anterior wall relaxation. So the diaphragm is supposed to is relaxing here and here it's paradoxically contracting, which means it's contracting when it's not supposed to be contracting. And again, that creates this sort of physical traffic jam whereby uh, the volume has to go somewhere and it ends up going through the stomach. So we have, again, paradoxical uh, relaxation of the anterior wall. I hope that's been helpful just insofar as understanding like what's going wrong in the mechanism. And uh, I'm very much at the stage of... I periodically get motivated to actually go and do something about this um, because I have not had success so far with your conventional drugs, amitriptyline or triptyline, the so-called central uh, neuromodulators. And I'm going to be looking now into biofeedback and physical therapy because I'm sick of being bloated all the time. Thanks for watching. And if you've made any progress in uh, figuring out your own abdominophrenic dysinertia or APD diagnosis of chronic bloating, uh, do let me know because so many people I know are looking for answers. Thanks for watching and have a great day.